In this lesson, we'll talk about how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So, first let me tell you what a quadratic is. In a quadratic equation, the highest variable power is 2. So we'll not have any exponents that are larger than 2. And here's an example of one. So I've got an x squared term, possibly an x term or a constant. And a lot of times we see 0 on the other side of that equation. And you can't solve this by isolating x because with two different types of variable terms here, you can't combine them. So we'll need something besides uh, our regular skills of solving linear equations. And what we use is the zero product principle. And here's what the zero product principle says. If a times b equals 0, then we know one of two things. Either a equals 0 or b equals 0. And, and so this is going to prove to be very powerful. But notice that it only works if we have 0 here. It has to be the 0 product principle. No other number will do this. You can't say, for example, if a times b equals 1, then num one of these numbers has to be 1. It's just not true for any number except 0. So it's absolutely critical that we get 0 on the right side of our equation. So here's an example, and this one has already been factored for us. And it says x minus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0. So here I have one thing times another thing set equal to 0. Well, if these two multiplied together make 0, then I know that either x minus 3 equals 0 or x, minus, or x plus 2 equals 0. So if x minus 3 equals 0, then x would have to be 3. And if x plus 2 equals 0, x would have to be negative 2. And again, the 0 is absolutely crucial here. You can't do this unless you have 0. So these are the two solutions to the equation, and we write them in curly braces. Um, really, curly braces imply a set in algebra or a list of things, and so the, the order of the list does not matter. It's not like an ordered pair. It's just a list of numbers. It happens to be two numbers long. But it is important that you use curly braces here because if you use parentheses or brackets, it looks like interval notation or ordered pair. So that's why we use the braces, not parentheses and not brackets. All right. So now let's see one that has not been factored yet. Let's look at 4x squared minus 2x equals 0. Well, now this is not a trinomial, so it cannot be factored into two binomials. But I see that it has a GCF, or a greatest common factor. So I'm going to factor out a GCF of 2x. And then in parentheses, I'll have two terms. So 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared. And 2x times minus 1 gives me minus 2x. And of course, this times that is equal to 0. Now, if this times this is equal to 0, one of my factors must be 0. If 2x is 0, then x itself must be 0. Because if 2 times something is 0, that thing must be 0. Okay. Now if 2x minus 1 is 0, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. That'll tell me that 2x equals 1, then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 x equals 1 half. So we're just solving this little um, linear equation and we got two solutions. 0 for the first factor and 1 half for the second factor. So those are my two solutions. Notice I put them in curly braces and I just put them in the order I found them. So the order is not important. On the other hand, this equation 2x squared plus 7x equals 4 I cannot factor out the GCF of x here because I don't have 0 over here on the right. 
I must start with zero on the right side. So let's do minus four on both sides. Okay, now I have a trinomial. And it does not have a common factor, so I'm going to factor it into two binomials. First times first has to be 2x squared, so that's going to be 2x times 1x. The signs need to be different, so I put down a minus and a plus. Last times last has to make 4, so my choices for these two places are either 2 times 2 or 1 times 4. I know I can't use 2 times 2 because if I put a 2 here, I'll create a GCF and I know I'm not supposed to have a GCF. So I'll have to go with 1 times 4. So if I put the 4 here, I still have the problem of a GCF. So I'm going to put the 1 here and the 4 here. And now let's make sure outer plus inner adds up to 7x, and it does. I get 8x minus 1x, which is 7x. Okay, now, if this times this equals 0, one of my factors has to be 0. If 2x minus 1 equals 0, and we're going to add 1 to both sides and divide both sides by 2, so x equals 1 half. If x plus 4 equals 0, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, and x equals negative 4. Okay, so we get 1 half and negative 4 as our solutions. And again, I just listed them in the order that I found them, not in order from smallest to largest or anything like that. So here's another example. 3x squared minus 2x equals 8. And we know that we want to try to solve this by factoring because it's quadratic. And we also know that we need a 0 over here. So let's do minus 8 on both sides. And then we take a look and we say, okay, it's a trinomial. It should factor into two binomials. First times first has to equal 3x squared. So that's 3x times 1x. The signs need to be different. And last times last needs to make 8. So I'm thinking a good place to start is to see if 4 times 2 will work. So let's check outer plus inner. I'm getting 6x minus 4x, which is positive 2x. But I need negative 2x, so I'm going to swap the signs. And now just make sure negative 6x plus 4x does make negative 2x. So this factoring is correct. Now if this times that is 0, one of my factors must be 0. Here I have the first factor already set equal to 0. So let's do minus 4 on both sides and divide both sides by 3. So one of our solutions is x equals negative 4 thirds. Now let's take x minus 2 equals 0, add 2 to both sides, and x equals 2. So these are my two solutions. Put them in curly braces, and that's it. Now you can check these, and I recommend that you take your calculator and learn how to check I'm going to check both of these solutions with you. You can either plug in and do the math in your head, or you can use a calculator like I said, but you need to get one or the other um, where you are comfortable doing it quickly. So let's check x equals negative 4 thirds. And what I've done is I've taken the original equation and replaced the x with negative 4 thirds. And just to walk through this with you by hand, uh, negative 4 thirds squared would give you positive 16 over 9. Negative 2 times negative 4 will give you positive 8. So negative 2, over, or negative two times negative 4 thirds will give you plus 8 thirds. And of course the right side of the equation is 8. Now uh, this is going to simplify. 3 over 9 reduces to 1 over 3. So I get 16 over 3 plus 8 over 3 equals 8. And of course, 16 plus 8 is 24. So 24 over 3 really does equal 8, which is what we needed it to for the right side. 
And so that one checks out. Here we go checking x equals 2. Plug it right into the original equation. 2 squared is 4. And negative 2 times 2 makes 4. Negative 4. All right, now 3 times 4 is 12. And 12 minus 4 equals 8. So this one is also correct. But they have to both check out. And like I said, please take your calculator and make sure that you can plug all this in and make it equal 8 on your calculator. Because if you can't, um, you need to get some help. You need to either come by my office and let me help you or um, find a friend. It's not difficult to do, but you need to practice doing it before test day. And let's just quickly recap what we learned about factoring. Solving quadratic equations by factoring. You need to get zero on one side of the equal mark. Then you factor. Factor out a GCF when possible. And if you only have two terms, then this is going to be probably what you have to do. You're going to set each factor then equal to zero and solve. And remember, the only reason you can do this step is because you have first made it equal zero on one side. And you can check, you can use a calculator to speed up on the fractions, but you need to practice checking a little bit because if you need to check on a test, that's not the time to be figuring out how to put stuff into the calculator.